For this 12th installment of Taking Up Space, I'm going to riff on the number 12 a bit and highlight an artifact and experience that's near and dear to my heart. As a Navy veteran, there's no better place to play on the number 12 than by looking at the crew of Apollo 12, the first all-Navy team to fly to the moon. In this episode, I'm going to share with you a very special photograph from my days in the Navy and by recalling an experience with Apollo 12 astronauts Alan Bean and Dick Gordon, explain why it's one of my most prized and cherished possessions. Are you ready? Here we go. Hello collectors and space fans, I'm Jim Franjone and welcome back to another installment of Taking Up Space, the place where space history lives and where every artifact tells a story. If you're as passionate as I am about the history of spaceflight and collecting vintage artifacts and space age memorabilia, be sure to click on the subscribe button and notification bell down below so that you don't miss out on a single episode. As I've mentioned in a couple of previous episodes, I'm a veteran of the United States Navy. As such, I take a great deal of pride in naval heritage and traditions. As America set sail on this new ocean of space, naval heritage, tradition, and leadership would help to define the space age. America's first astronaut, Alan Shepard, Navy. Neil Armstrong, Navy. Six of the seven lunar landing missions, all commanded by naval aviators. And the crew of Apollo 12, well, they were a 100% Navy crew. Now this crew, comprised of Commander Pete Conrad, Command Module Pilot Dick Gordon, and Lunar Module Pilot Alan Bean were so much more than just an assigned crew for that flight. They were genuine friends, with relationships predating their selections as astronauts, all the way back to flight test school at Patuxent Naval Air Station. For them, there was a genuine history and camaraderie full of naval pride going into the flight of Apollo 12, from training all the way through to the end of quarantine. To give you a good sense of what I mean, the spirit of Apollo 12's crew was captured fantastically in HBO's 12-part miniseries From the Earth to the Moon in an episode titled That's All There Is. If you haven't seen it already, I'd highly recommend it as it will give you a really good sense of what I'm about to share with you. There's a mystique to Apollo 12 and an essence to her crew that's unlike any other. It's as if this were the story of three buddies who embarked together on a road trip of a lifetime. Full of Navy spirit, these three guys pretty much laughed their way to the moon and back. And you can hear that here in the audio after recovering their electrical systems that were knocked offline after they were struck by lightning upon launch. That takes more than skill, it takes nerve and a certain type of confidence that comes from being not just pilots, but naval aviators. As for traditions, there are a number of naval traditions that could be talked about. The shellback initiation involved in crossing the equator, and the order of the ditch for having transited the Panama Canal among them. But for this episode, I will key in on the tradition involved in the act of re-enlistment, or re-upping, to continue one's naval service. As a matter of tradition, the re-enlistee gets to select the location where they will raise their right hand to swear the oath of enlistment. Now, if timing and scheduling work out, it's generally best to do this while at sea. For sailors, there's no more befitting a place for this type of situation. If not at sea, many opt for exotic locations in foreign ports or on beaches. And if it occurs while in home port, many enjoy the most exotic place that they can think of to drag the re-enlisting officer to read the oath of enlistment, like the long perilous climb to the top of the ship's mast. In my own case, I was in home port in Norfolk, Virginia, and our ship was in dry dock for repairs and upgrades. So much for an ocean-going theme. But the Langley Visitor Center at the Virginia Air and Space Museum had recently been opened, and housed in that museum was none other than the Yankee Clipper, the command module for Apollo 12, the first all-Navy crew to fly to the moon. For me, there could be no better place to take the oath of re-enlistment. After all, I was more than just a casual space enthusiast. My very decision to serve in the military was in part inspired by the astronauts, pretty much all of whom served in the military. And with the Navy flown Yankee Clipper as a backdrop, this seemed like the perfect setting for the story of my service to come full circle. And with that, I raised my right hand to sign on for four more years of service. The photo you see here is not one of an astronaut, nor was it taken in space. It's a picture of me being sworn in as my division chief reads me the oath of enlistment. How it came to be signed by the Apollo 12 crew is a journey in and of itself. Keep in mind, this is happening in the very early days of the World Wide Web. Google isn't even an idea at this point. After the ceremony, I embarked on a letter writing campaign. Yes, 
snail mail. First to figure out how I could reach Captains Conrad, Bean, and Gordon, and then to them individually, each with return envelopes. And much to my surprise and delight, after several months, all three of these gentlemen had put their stamp of approval on my re-enlistment. The first was Alan Bean, lunar module pilot and future space artist, who also included the awesome inscription to Jim Franjone from three old Navy salts to a brand new one. Congratulations. Captains Conrad and Gordon would follow. To me, it's priceless. As if this alone wasn't enough to make this one of the most cherished possessions from my time of naval service, what happened upon meeting Alan Bean in 2005, some 11 years after this photo was signed, truly put me over the moon, no pun intended. You see, I got to meet Alan Bean and Dick Gordon at a gathering of astronauts and cosmonauts in 2005, hosted by Sims Hankow. At that event, there was a fair amount of time to meet with them and even dine with them and to talk about space history and aircraft or whatever burning question one may have had. It was an encounter like none other and I'm forever grateful to Nolan Sims and Steve Hankow of Farthest Reaches for the gift of such an opportunity. In particular, I remember how gracious they were with my kids. They really took time to connect. No better example of this was watching Alan Bean talk to my then four-year-old son about how he was the first person to eat spaghetti on the moon. My son grinned with delight and amazement and was absolutely enthralled by the storytelling and the notion that he and the man on the moon shared a mutual love for spaghetti. I could see it in my son that day that anything seemed possible. So after all of this, I was of course giving Alan Bean thanks for so much, his time, his service, his personal inspiration, and his generosity throughout the weekend. And then I mentioned that I also had to thank him for something he did for me 11 years prior, and I brought up his signing of this re-enlistment photo. He looked at me and said, gosh, I remember that. And I chewed on that for what seemed like a long while, but in reality it was probably only an instant. But the expression on my face surely must have telegraphed my thinking, which was there's no way he could remember my autograph request out of the thousands or perhaps hundreds of thousands he had signed since. As if sensing my disbelief, he cut me off and said, no, 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 I'm serious. I remember that. It was one of a kind. It was that unique. And here you are. Isn't this something? Uh, yes, this is something. It's something, all right. My mind was absolutely blown. That somewhere in the mind of a man who walked on the moon was this recollection of my re-enlistment ceremony. I was staggered by that sense of connection. It was visceral and it hit me in the gut and I was deeply personal and it brought a whole new meaning to this picture for me. Humbled and stunned beyond words, we queued up for one final photo that weekend. With Al Bean and Dick Gordon on either side of me, I said to Al, I feel like the Dick Gordon character in your painting, The Fantasy, where the CMP got to walk on the moon with you guys too. I'm wondering how in the world I got here. Would it be okay if I struck the pose? He and Dick Gordon literally laughed out loud and his smile in this photo reveals it Alan Bean got a huge kick out of my recognition of his art, especially when Dick Gordon chimed in that he'd take care of the rabbit ears. For me, it was a surreal moment of joy and awe that to this day still defies an adequate description. In that moment, I was in on a joke with them, as if a little bit of that Apollo 12 mystique had been conferred upon me. For a brief moment in time, our orbits had intersected, and for that moment in time, and for all their example has instilled in me, I remain forever grateful. Now, if you're a student, maybe dreaming of traveling in space one day, I hope that through my sharing of this artifact and this story, that some of that magic so graciously given to me has now rubbed off on you. That, just as their service inspired my own, they will inspire you to pursue your dreams through science, technology, engineering, art, and or math. And that you'll laugh all the way to your destination and back, wherever it may be. After all, Apollo was a human endeavor, and none were more human than the crew of Apollo 12. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this personal favorite photo of mine and hearing a little bit of the story of what it was like to meet, eat, and chat with a personal hero and inspiration of mine, someone who actually walked on the moon. For certain, I know I've enjoyed reliving these moments and sharing these stories with you. In a future episode, I'm gonna highlight the art of Alan Bean in more detail, and I'll share some more of that dinner table conversation with you, as well as some of his signed limited edition prints that I have in my collection, one of which you've seen hovering over my shoulder that's titled A New Frontier. During a subsequent encounter with Alan Bean in 2016, we got to talk quite a bit about that painting and I look forward to sharing that story with you as well. As always, I wanna thank you for tuning into this channel. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up down below and feel free to let me know your thoughts by dropping me an email at jim.takingupspace at gmail.com. 
And one other shout out to my friend Sam for this really cool sweatshirt. Sam, thank you and the gals over at Milan Jolie for this really, really cool gift. I do appreciate it. Until next time, collectors and space fans, keep your head held high and keep your eyes on the stars.